Good morning, everybody, and welcome, everybody, and, and those that are online, welcome to you, too. It's nice to have, it's been a nice fall, hasn't it? A little bit warmer, beautiful weather, it's been wonderful. I hope you've had a, a good week. But sometimes we need to check ourselves, and uh, if you feel free and full of the joy of the Lord, that's awesome, but maybe you don't. Sometimes when we don't feel full of the joy of the Lord, if you check back in your week, oftentimes there's somebody that you just have a hard time with. Maybe that you're having a hard time forgiving, that you're struggling with. And forgiveness is a tough thing that kind of lingers in our background a little bit. Sometimes there's somebody at school, sometimes there's somebody at church, somebody at work, at home, Maybe a politician, maybe a neighbor that you struggle with. And you need to check your spirits to see if that person is hampering your joy this morning. I want you, if, you're, if you have your phones, and Ray, if you can put that number up on the screen. But if you have... Um, something that you, if there's something that you say, you know, this is one thing I really have a hard time forgiving, just text it to me. Um, because we all have something that's hard. Um, sometimes it's the people closest to us are the hardest. You know, sometimes when you're walking down a road, the sidewalk, and somebody says something really mean to us, for some reason we can brush that off because I don't know you. You don't mean anything to me. I, it's okay. Whatever. I don't know what's going on in your life. It's okay. But when your spouse or your child or somebody super close to you says exactly the same thing, it cuts right into the heart. And sometimes we have a hard time forgiving. So we're going to talk about that. And for those of you who have just joined us, maybe you missed a week or two, we've started a new series. We finished up our a series on the Psalms. You're welcome to look at that online. I encourage you to do that. But we're starting to look at a series called, uh, you can call it fake news or lies that we tell ourselves. And so we're going to be looking at forgiveness today. Ephesians 4 verse 32 says this, be kind and compassionate to one another, forgiving each other just as in Christ God forgave you. It's interesting, you notice he doesn't say, be kind and compassionate to one another, forgive each other. It says forgiving. You know what that means? That means you keep doing it. It's an ongoing thing. Every day we gotta choose it. You keep doing it. And one of the best places we can start when it comes to getting in the right mode to keep forgiving is to come to the one who forgives us every day and praise his name. So we're going to start today by singing our praise to God as Vic comes to lead us. Thank you, Vic. Thank you, let's, Vic. Let's start. a few announcements today. Um, man, we're really struggling with getting these front steps done. 
Pray for Ralph, pray for me, pray that we can have creativity, get this done. It's amazing with all the jobs that are open out there, some jobs uh, are, they're, they're in high demand and we have a hard time getting the people to do things. Um, our biggest issue for the front steps is we need a truck to haul the stuff away to get with the cement and uh, it's hard to find trucks that can handle cement. So if you know somebody who says, yep, I can do that, then let me know. I have a couple lines on people, but we didn't have it right for Saturday. So uh, talk to me afterwards if you can help with that. But we are going to get those done. Um, we had a brief congregational meeting last week. Um, and uh, for those of you who are here today, and for those of you who are online, you may have missed the fact that we had a movie being filmed here over this past week. So it's pretty crazy. So if you can imagine, we had upwards of almost 160 people in different parts of filming all over this church, all over the next block, even in the Lutheran church, they had it set up for lunch. But uh, it was pretty interesting. And uh, you can ask me all about the stories and I can show you a little bit, but uh, we cannot put any pictures online because of copyright stuff. But I'm happy to show you a few things. But uh, for those of you who are here this morning, you can just go check out uh, some of the stuff that they've done at the back. And if <laughs> I think God has a real sense of humor because uh, our foyer on Friday was a prison. So <laughs> Today, we're free from prison. Amen? All right. Yes. And uh, just a reminder that if you are giving, you'll see the uh, website up on your screen, finance at nbcchurch.ca. That's the site that you can do e-transfers. And we'll take it whatever way you can give us. God still wants us to serve him by doing things, and it always costs money. So if you can help us, you can give e-transfer there, or you can still bring checks or send them in, or however you want to get it to us. So thank you for everybody who has been doing that and your faithfulness in that. Let's just bow in prayer as we continue to worship our God. Lord, we are amazed at what you do. We're amazed at the creative ways you use to grow your kingdom. And Lord, I just pray that even just with the film crew being in here uh, this past week, that I pray that something they saw or something they felt would stir something in their heart to pursue you. God, we know there are many people who desperately need you. God, I pray for us personally that in this COVID time where it's easy to sit by ourselves at home and watch screens, that you would give us the courage to speak to people, to share Jesus, to show love in tangible ways, to be expressive of our faith to the many people who do not know you. God, I just pray for the many people that are being affected by COVID in a new way in the last little bit, for all of our kids, for the different families who, in spite of protection, have gotten COVID in the last little while. Pray especially for our frontline workers that are feeling a little bit overwhelmed right now. I pray for our politicians and leaders who are trying to manage this amidst all the protesting and anger and struggles with it. God, give us a gracious, forgiving spirit. We need it for these times. God, I just pray especially for those within our church that are struggling with their health. I pray for Ralph and Millie continue to strengthen them as they recover from COVID. Pray for Curtis and Elaine and uh, Becky this morning, just to watch over all of them. Lord, I just thank you for this opportunity now to praise your amazing name, who forgives and forgives and forgives. It's in your nature to forgive because of love. God, and so we come to you for forgiveness this morning. Forgive us for the many times this week where we have messed up. Forgive us for the many times where we have intentionally 
chosen to move in the opposite direction of you. God, forgive us for the many people that we struggle with forgiving, even though you have forgiven us fully. God, I just pray this morning you would fill us with joy, cleanse our hearts. And Lord, we just pray as you have taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. One more announcement. Go ahead. You can come. Um, this month is Pastor Appreciation Month, and you know, so often we take our pastors for granted, like they're working for God, what do they need prayer for? <laughs> they're supposed to pray for us. So this month I'd like to take each week and pray for a different aspect of our pastors. Um, today it's for them personally. Next week I'd like to pray for their marriages, the week after for their families, for their children, and lastly for their ministry. So we're going to pray for Gabriel and Greg. Um, Everil, I'll, I'll let you start. Let us pray. Oh, gracious Heavenly Father, our loving God, we just thank you today for the life of Pastor Greg and Pastor Gabriel. Father God, we give you thanks and praise for bringing them into our church family. Heavenly Father, we just ask that you will grant them wisdom and strength and understanding in the path that you would have them go in this church and in the community. Heavenly Father, we ask that you will continue to hold them with your strong right arm. And oh, Heavenly Father, let the light of your countenance continue to shine upon them, to direct your path and the path of their families. Oh, hear us, Heavenly Father, bless them and give them the wisdom that they need to continue to serve in this place. In your precious name we pray. Amen. And Heavenly Father, I pray that you would provide them with people that they can turn to for support, um, to in, for encouragement. Lord, help them to have those um, accountability people in their lives to, to hold them accountable and to encourage them. Father, give them confidence and um, perseverance and joy in the midst of their service. I thank you, Lord, for the work that they do in our lives, for the support they provide, for the prayers that they give. And I thank you that you have enabled us to be a family who serves you. And I just pray for, for uh, Greg and Gabriel that you would continue to um, direct them, guide them, encourage them, build them up, strengthen them, and help them to continue to serve you with their whole heart. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you. Just before Vic comes, a couple more things. Um, Bible study is starting up this week uh, online. So uh, please take advantage of that. How many of you are missing getting together? I know I am. <laughs> Uh, but at least it's something that we can do to at least stay in touch and uh, get together. And also, thank you for Shirley Ann and Evro for praying for us. Uh, I don't mind saying I need prayer. <laughs> and I don't know how much you are aware about how difficult being pastor is. Um, they say that the average pastor wants to quit every couple of weeks. Maybe it's every day, I'm not sure. But uh, um, it's a tough job. Um, in fact, 
under the age of 35, there only 5% of the pastors in ministry are under 35. That's a problem. Most denominations now have more positions open than they have new people coming in to fill those positions. So please pray, not only for us, but that more young people will go into ministry. We need them. And you can be a part of that, training pastors. Thank you. That's my little side piece. Vic's going to come and lead us again. Yes. The vote. Yes, sorry. Um, now, our minutes for the meeting, would that be online yet? Um, okay, so we should maybe get Mabel to send out those minutes so people know exactly what happened. If you missed the meeting, uh, there was a motion to approve uh, Afghani family in Afghanistan for our, us to support them, and that passed. So we will be moving ahead with supporting that family. Um, as you know, Aziz, uh, that was here the last few Sundays, has moved from the States to try to emigrate to Canada to help us with an Afghani ministry. Um, he has just gone back, actually, uh, yesterday to... Um, uh, go to a conference, but we'll be back on the 8th. Pray that he can get in okay, and pray that they will give him a visa, a, a work permit, or a volunteer status, or whatever, at the border, so, to give him a little more freedom to work here. But uh, continue to pray for that. Thank you. Vic, come and lead us. Shall we stand as we sing? <laughs> Years I spent in vanity and pride, caring not my Lord was crucified, knowing not it was for me he died not Calvary. Mercy there was great and grace was for me, pardon there was multiplied to me, there my burden
Our scripture reading this morning is from Colossians chapter 3, verses 12 to 17. Therefore, as God's chosen people, holy and dearly loved, clothe yourself with compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. Bear with each other and forgive one another if any of you has a grievance against someone. Forgive as the Lord forgave you. And over all these virtues, put on love, which binds them all together in perfect unity. Let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts, since as members of one body you are called to peace, and be thankful. Let the message of Christ dwell among you richly as you teach and admonish one another with all wisdom through psalms, hymns, and songs from the Spirit, singing to God with gratitude in your hearts. And whatever you do, whether in word or deed, do it all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. Amen. Thank. My 
soul, my thirsty soul, can rest in the depths of your love. Just a reminder for those of you who are at home, this is Communion Sunday, and we'll be celebrating the Lord's table together. And so if you want to get some elements for that, that would be great. For those of you that are here, just wave your arm wildly if you haven't got them yet. And uh, Shirley Ann will get you some this morning. As I mentioned earlier, we've been starting a new series on lies that we tell ourselves. I remember this summer, my wife and I were visiting some good friends. And uh, I could tell that they struggled with forgiveness. And this is not something that a neighbor did to them last week. Some of the struggle went back decades. And it came out a couple of times in some strong ways. And I realized that there was some deep, deep hurt, hurt there. And so this morning, we're going to talk about the lie that says that forgiveness only happens on certain occasions, that it's conditional. Forgiveness is conditional. In recent years, you may not all listen to this, but there is a song that was popularized on the radio that said that it's too late to forgive. You know the tune? Maybe somebody, maybe Daniel might know it. It's too late to apologize or whatever. I won't sing it. But in the song, the lyrics go something like this. You tell me that you need me, and then you go and cut me down. But wait, you tell me you're sorry. Then think I'd turn around and say, it's too late to apologize. It's too late. I'd take another chance, take a fall, take a shot for you. And I need you like a heart needs a beat. But it's nothing new. But I'm afraid it's too late to apologize. It's too late. Do you feel that this morning? Is it too late to apologize? Many of us know somebody that hurt us deeply. And we have a difficult time with forgiving. When did you begin believing that there were circumstances or situations where it was right and okay to not forgive? Can you think of a person or an instance in your life right now that is difficult or maybe for you, you feel it's impossible to forgive? Maybe there's somebody with a different view of how to deal with COVID, and it drives you crazy. Maybe they're for masks or against masks or for vaccines or against it, whatever. But you're angry at them, and you just don't get it, and you are not going to forgive them, or politicians. And the resentment builds. And over the years, I've heard a lot of different excuses, and I hear many, many reasons that seem to be legitimate reasons why maybe there are some situations where you don't need to forgive. It's okay. It's just too bad. Well, there's a lot of excuses we give. One of the excuses that's common is, well, they haven't asked me forgiveness. I'm not going to give them, say, yes, you're forgiven, if they don't ask for it. 
seems pretty legitimate. I mean, it's hard when you don't see them. How do I give them forgiveness? Maybe they don't ask. Maybe they don't seem to want forgiveness. And then you think, well, they're not asking. Obviously, they don't want it. I'm not giving it. Or how about when somebody doesn't apologize in the right way? You know, when you want an apology for stealing cookies, parents, <laughs> and the kid says, I'm sorry, I was hungry. It's like, well, I'm, maybe you're hungry, but that's not the apology I was looking for. You're not forgiven. Or how about when somebody seems like they're not authentic in the way they apologize? You know, we've all heard that kind of sarcastic edge. Well, sorry. And we know they're not really serious about apologizing, right? So it's like, if that's the way you're going to say it, for sure I'm not going to forgive you for that. Or the one that seems to go beyond our sensibilities, our moral standards. And you know, we'll say, you know, I can forgive this and this and this, but this, there is no way I'm forgiving that. I mean, yes, you can borrow a little bit of money from me and not pay it back, but when you lie to me, I will never forgive you. And each one of us, you can fill in the blank. I can forgive this and this and this, but this, no way. You are not being forgiven. Or how about when people keep doing the same thing over and over again? And we feel justified because, you know what? I have forgiven and forgiven and forgiven and forgiven this person. I am done. I have tried for so long and they never change. What is the point? I am not forgiving them anymore. Or sometimes we play God. And we, we kind of say, you know, I am not going to take this sin lightly. This is wrong. And they need to be punished for it. So I need to see some consequences so I am not forgiving them. And sometimes there is kind of this passive aggressive thing going on in us where it's kind of like they need to pay for what they did. So I'm not going to forgive them until they've really paid for this. Right? And so you can see, and I've just mentioned some of them, we are very good at creating ways and reasons why we do not need to forgive. Here's the problem. When you do not forgive, regardless of their response, it will wound you. It will hurt you. So how do we respond when somebody wounds us? Well, for many of us, we just get mad. We may not express it publicly. We may not explode but we are angry inside. And some of us are carrying that anger inside for years, maybe decades, maybe our whole lives. Maybe you don't even know why you're angry and you've never looked into it. And that hurt simmers away under the surface. Sometimes we kind of we react by just kind of being, just kind of dismissive or ignoring it. It's kind of like, they didn't really hurt me. No, I'm fine, I'm fine. And yet it affects us. And it does hurt. See, here's the thing about forgiveness. Forgiveness is a very costly gift. It takes sacrifice. It means giving up something. But it is a gift that can bring healing to your friends, to your relationships, and even to your own health. But it doesn't come naturally, does it? Forgiveness is a choice. And it's sometimes a very difficult choice. 
But it's a choice that we must learn and build the muscle of forgiveness every single moment of every day. Because I can almost guarantee you, today, you will have to forgive somebody. Because we are all broken people. Somebody is going to do a broken thing. And we need to learn the skills of forgiving other people. Sometimes, numerous times a day. You go to work, there's co-workers you need to forgive. Before you even get out the door, you may have to forgive somebody at home. On the way to work, you got to forgive somebody in traffic. Do you know what all that road rage is about? It's unforgiveness. I will not forgive you for cutting me off. You're going to get it. And our spouses and our friends and the government and on it goes. There are too many things that come into every single day that we need to learn to forgive. And sometimes we need to learn to forgive God for what he has done. But forgiveness is, at the cho at, at, is a choice. At the heart of it, forgiveness is an act of the will. Choosing not to hold an offense against someone. Choosing not to dwell on a, an offense or rehearse it in your thoughts. Choosing not to keep a record. We all know the famous passage in 1 Corinthians about love. What does it say? Love is not rude. It is not self-seeking. It is not easily angered. It keeps no record of wrongs. None. So if forgiveness is so necessary, if it is so painful and difficult, why do we do it? How do we get there? Why do we forgive? Well, the scripture gives us all kinds of reasons. It is something well talked about in the scriptures. And the first thing we need to get our focus on is we forgive because God says to forgive. If you say you believe in Jesus, if you say you believe in God, then you will listen to what he tells you to do. And the first thing he says is forgive. Ephesians 4, it says, get rid of all bitterness and rage and anger. All of it. All of it. Brawling, slander, along with every form of malice. And just remember that behind a lot of slander and malice and hatred and bitterness is unforgiveness. It goes on, be kind and compassionate to one another, forgiving each other just as in Christ God forgave you. Matthew, that we just said in our prayer, in the Lord's Prayer, forgive us our debts as we also forgive our debtors. Colossians 3, bear with each other and forgive whatever grievances you may have against one another. Forgive as the Lord forgave you. So first of all, we forgive because God tells us to. Secondly, we forgive because God didn't just stand up in heaven on his throne and says, Come on, guys, let's forgive a little better. He sends his son down and he demonstrates how to forgive. He shows us the way. What a great God. Remember Jesus on the cross, falsely accused, beaten, spat on, cursed, while he is dying. He looks down from the cross with his dying, agonizing breaths and says, God, Father, forgive them because they don't know what they're doing. And just think about that for a second. Jesus, from his dying breath, is choosing forgiveness. In his dying breath, he's looking at the very people that are mocking him, that are actually killing him. Cursing him, ridiculing him. He sees the soldier that has put the knife in his side. He sees the soldier that has nailed his foot to the cross. And he says, Father, forgive them because they don't know what they're doing. 
How could he do that? And see, Jesus didn't say, Father, forgive them, because, oh yes, over there, I see that man. He's clearly showing some signs of repentance. Oh, and that lady over there, I think she's letting up a little bit. Forgive her. No. He says, they don't know what they're doing. Forgive them all. I'm not waiting for a response. I'm dying. But I'm going to forgive them all. See, Jesus forgave from the cross. Not because he had to. Not because it was the right thing to do. Jesus forgave from the cross because he had made it a lifestyle to forgive. You see, love will always choose to forgive. Deep, agape, God-like love. Its nature is to forgive. The very fact that God sent his son down was a forgiving act. When you are mistreated, remember Jesus' example and ask God to help you extend Christ's forgiveness to others. The third thing I notice, not only does Jesus show us the way, but God, we do it, we forgive because God forgives us as we forgive others. Now let me explain. This does not mean that we only can give forgiveness if they respond. What God is saying is that there is something that happens in us when we make the choice to forgive. Jesus could have given no stronger reason to forgive than when he said, God will not forgive you if you do not forgive others. Whoa. Does that mean our forgiveness from God is conditional? No. What Jesus did on the cross was for past, present, and future sins. But we do not experience the depth of God's forgiveness if we don't choose to forgive. Because when we don't forgive, we are not living in the grace that Christ has given us. We're not understanding what forgiveness is. We're not understanding what love does. We're not understanding all that we've received in Jesus when we choose not to forgive. And that's why God says, if you don't forgive, you won't be forgiven, because you don't get it. And be careful with this one. Because even though God says it's conditional, it doesn't give us an excuse to say, I can only forgive if they ask for it. No, Jesus demonstrated that was false on the cross. It's just what it does to our heart. And even when we refuse God's forgiveness, it doesn't mean that God's forgiveness is not available. Mark 11, when you stand praying, if you hold anything against anyone, forgive him so that your Father in heaven may forgive you your sins. See, when we come to prayer and we say, God, could you help me with this? And could you help me with that? God, could you forgive me? But I am not forgiving that person. God is saying, hold on a second. Are you really asking me something? Or are you just telling me what you want to believe? Remember the parable of the unmerciful servant? Matthew chapter 18. This king cancels this huge debt of his servant. That servant owed him. And the servant turns around and throws his servant into prison because of a much smaller, piddly amount of money. And Jesus said, shouldn't you have had mercy in the parable? He says, shouldn't you have had mercy on your fellow servant just as I had on you? See, when we understand forgiveness, we will turn around and pass it on. In other words, God is teaching us this principle that when you receive something good, be generous and pass it on. If you understand how good that gift of forgiveness truly is, you will want to pass it on. And we all see the selfishness of somebody who hoards their wealth and not sharing. 
See, it wasn't just on the cross that we find forgiveness. It's not just as at the moment where we accepted Jesus into our hearts that we find forgiveness. Jesus is generously pouring out forgiveness every moment of every day. As we constantly mess up. Jesus' death on the cross was for past, present, and future sins. That's how expensive that death was. And we are inundated by this enormous, continuous, gracious, generous forgiveness. And to not pass that on belittles what forgiveness of God is and what it has done for us. Fourthly, we forgive because it brings healing in your relationships. Sometimes we deceive ourselves that, you know what, that was just too bad, I can't forgive that. When we say that, it immediately hurts that relationship. That relationship becomes strained and broken. And it's inevitable that people, including your best friend, your pastor even, I know it's hard to believe, but even your pastor can hurt you. Your spouse, your coworker, your neighbor. And they are going to do things from time to time to hurt you because we are broken people. None of us are perfect. We're impolite. We're selfish. We're mean. We get depressed. We get angry. We get tempted. And all kinds of things were messed up. And if we don't forgive other people's words or actions, we become bitter and resentful and our relationships suffer. And pretty soon, this unforgiving heart sets in. And the more people you choose to not forgive, the more you find yourself standing alone. But when we start to choose forgiveness, you find that the relationships surely grow and you have more and more people in your circle. Fifthly, we forgive because it strengthens our ministry. God has called every one of us to serve him. And everybody here and everybody listening who believes in Jesus would say, yes, I serve God. I serve a living God. But when we harbor bitterness and unforgiveness, it hampers what God can do through you. Ephesians 2 says, We are God's workmanship, created in Christ Jesus to do good works, which God prepared in advance for Him to do. But guess what's going to happen? God says, Today I want you to go talk to this person. And you say, I'm not talking to that person. And immediately, all the goodness that God was going to use through you in that person is shut off. It hampers us. Sixth, it will bring healing to you. Even if you don't care about anybody else, the moment you choose to not forgive, it will affect your health. If you care about your health, an unforgiving spirit will affect you and your health. The scripture talks about unforgiveness as actually hurting your bones, your bitterness. It can dry up your bones. It can cause all kinds of disease. And that bitterness can fester like a cancer. And the Bible says in Hebrews chapter 12, see to it that no one misses the grace of God and that no bitter root grows up to cause trouble and defile many. See, when you let bitterness in, it can grow. You don't even perceive it sometimes. It's a slow growth. Trees grow over a lifetime. When we plant the wrong stuff, it just grows deeper in the wrong way. And the fruit becomes bitter. And so often we say, well, that person deserves not to be forgiven. We're not going to let them off easily. Or we say, you know, 
I suffered and so she's going to suffer too. And maybe you think and we are deceived that by not forgiving, we are hurting them more. They're going to pay. And we forget to look in the mirror because we are being destroyed at the same time. Sometimes they may not even be aware that they've hurt you. And they're going on freely. We are the ones that are suffering. And not only can it hurt your sense of peace and your walk with God, it can affect you physically. And forgiveness helps you to break free from self-pity and experience God's peace. And it pushes you into this confident, victorious position where you can start living this amazing adventure with God. Well, those are a bunch of reasons as to why we need to ask forgiveness. Let me just close with a few practical steps of how we can go about it. Maybe you've lived a whole life struggling with forgiveness. How do you get there? Number one, start right now. See, our deception says, okay, I know this person, I need to forgive them, but they're away and I might not see them again and I don't feel like it today. No. If you're serious about forgiveness, start now. When this service is over, get on the phone, go to their house and ask forgiveness. In fact, the scripture says, if you're bringing your tithe to the church, and you remember somebody that you have not forgiven, run to their door and forgive them first, and then bring your tithe. That's how important it is. Secondly, it can take some time. You can make a choice today to forgive. But maybe the other person has raped you. Maybe that other person has physically abused you. And we don't just heal on the spot. When a doctor sets a bone, sometimes it takes a while to heal. So don't expect that that feeling of being free and forgiveness will happen overnight. But we choose to forgive. We don't wait. Remember Stephen, as he was being stoned for his faith, he says, Lord, don't hold their sin against them. He doesn't wait. He could, he could have said, you know what? I'm going up to heaven because they're going to kill me. I'm not forgiving those guys. Let them rot. No, he says, right now before I die, God, forgive them. Forgive them. While the soldiers are casting lots over his clothes, gambling over his clothes at the foot of the cross, Jesus says, forgive them now. Doesn't wait. Thirdly, forgiveness takes you out of a victim role. Sometimes we like not forgiving because we feel like, poor me, you know, I've just had it rough all my life. And we actually feel a little bit proud of that. When we choose forgiveness, we, don't, we take away those excuses. We start living in a different way. And you redefine your role as instead of somebody who is always getting wounded, you are choosing to live in the grace of God as a child of a king. As someone who God has called to serve others. And you enjoy every day because you're not a victim. You're a child of the king. Amen? And fourthly, forgiveness doesn't always mean literally forgetting. Now, at my age, I, do, I have forgotten a lot of things that have happened to me. But forgiveness is sometimes like a wound that is healed. We often are healed, but we still see the scar. We may even feel the scar. Don't ever believe that simply forgiving is forgetting. In fact, often when we try to believe that, it's, we're trying to escape it without really forgiving people. And sometimes when we say, though, when we say, I can forgive, but I won't forget, 
At that moment, you need to stop and check yourself and to see what's really going on in your heart. Because we're bringing it up again. Maybe there's something more going on. And then forgiveness does not mean you ignore the problem. Sometimes when there is deep wounds, you need to do something about it. When you have been abused or hurt by somebody else, sometimes before you can forgive, you need to remove yourself from that person. You need to place yourself in a safe place. Sometimes when somebody has stolen from you, there is consequences in the law. So sometimes it does not mean ignoring the problem. And then we gently express sometimes our feelings when we ask for apology. Be careful. If you're angry at somebody, don't ask or, or tell them they're forgiven then. Give yourself a few minutes to calm down. Talk about it gently. It's okay to say, you know, you really hurt me. But I forgive you. But just because sometimes we are such an emotional person, it might take us years to get there. Don't wait years. But at least sometimes overnight can sometimes help. Proverbs 19 says, A man's wisdom gives him patience. It is his glory to overlook an offense. And so sometimes there are times where we actually overlook the offense. It just doesn't matter. We don't have to make a big deal every time. Because if you made a big deal of saying, Oh, I forgive you for that. I forgive you for looking at me that way. And I forgive you for that next word you're going to say. It could be endless because we're all broken people, right? So we have to learn with maturity to choose forgiveness all the time. And sometimes forgiveness means practicing what Jesus said in Matthew 18. This should be the foundational of every single Christian, this passage. It says this, If your brother sins against you, go and show him his fault just between the two of you. And if he listens to you, you have won your brother over. But if he will not listen, take one or two others, so that every matter may be established by testimony of two or three witnesses. If he refuses to listen to them, tell it to the church. And if he refuses to listen even to the church, treat him as you would a pagan or a tax collector. And just incidentally, when the Bible says treat them like a pagan and a tax collector, that does not mean kick them out of the church. It means treat them as somebody who does not understand the gospel and love them. Don't take them away from being allowed to hear the word of God. And then learn from all the unforgiveness and be wise in your future interactions. Sometimes we do stuff that makes people mad and hurt us all the time. Sometimes we need to learn a little bit to react, behave differently. And as we do all those things, God will heal us. God will come and help us. I hope after all of this, you're beginning to see how huge forgiveness is and such an important part of everyday life. To refuse to dwell on the hard things, controlling your thoughts, Stop talking about old wounds. Not taking back forgiveness that you've already extended. Let me just finish as we prepare for communion with this verse from Galatians 6. Let us not become weary in doing good. For at the proper time we'll reap a harvest if we don't give up. Amen. Let's pray as we prepare for the communion table. Lord, we are amazed by your forgiveness. Keep our eyes focused on all the generosity in your forgiveness to give us strength to forgive others because we don't have a hope of living lives of forgiving others unless we lean on your strength. There is too much pain in this world, too much terrible hurts to have the energy and the courage to forgive some that seem impossible to forgive. Lord, I pray for each person listening as they remember that one thing that was done to them so painfully that they cannot forget it, God, wash over them with your forgiveness. 
Because truthfully, every one of us has done the unthinkable and rebelled against the very God who created us, who have intentionally hurt you in our pain. Forgive us, Lord, for our numerous sins. And I thank you that in Christ we can stand free and forgiven because of what you did on the cross, where you forgave even before we even uttered a word. You said, Father, forgive them because they don't know what they're doing. While we were still sinning, Christ died for us. That's how you demonstrated your love. Go before us. Speak to us through your spirit today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. on me. Every time I come to this table, I marvel at this man, Jesus, who stands in a room and chooses to have dinner with this man right in front of him who is going to betray him for just 30 pieces of money, who stands and washes this man's feet, who three times is gonna say, I never knew you, even though Jesus had poured his heart out for that person. And he's gonna say, I never knew you. And everyone, he can go through each one and say, I love you, even though every one of them is gonna run from him and doubt him and betray him. Can we do that? Forgiveness is difficult. In fact, it's impossible without the grace of God. And don't think it's any easy for pastors. I've had people say, you shouldn't be in ministry. Get out of this church. I've had people say, I don't like you. I don't trust you. I've had people that I've poured into who I love dearly as a best friend betray that trust. But the thing is, I've betrayed people's trust too. And we all need Jesus. And that's what the communion table is all about. Jesus says, remember me till I come. He's not just saying, remember this picture that we hang on the wall. He's saying, actively remember what I have done for you and live in that. Let's pray and thank God for his broken body for us. Lord, we are amazed 
We stand humbly before you today as broken people who sin again and again and again. And forgive us for the times we are so blinded to the log in our own eyes that we cannot even extend a little bit of forgiveness to that person who has just hurt us once when we hurt you every day. God, I thank you for your courage to, from the cross, when you didn't even have to, you said, Father, forgive them. My Father, who loves me, forgive these people here who I don't even need in heaven, but I want you to forgive them because they don't know what they're doing. God, you're an incredible God. Help me to stand in the strength of your forgiveness alone and to live with purpose and servant servitude because I owe you everything. In Jesus' name, amen. And Jesus eagerly called his disciples together, his betrayers together, and he says, I want to eat with you. Let's eat this together remembering what Jesus has done for us in his body. And after the meal, Jesus took the cup and he says, well, this cup is a new covenant forever. A new covenant in my blood Jesus is planning his death and saying, in that blood that I am about to shed, I am making a forever covenant with all 12 of you and beyond who are betraying me. That's amazing. See, his covenant with us is not dependent on us. Thank goodness for that. We need to choose to live in the power and the presence of of that powerful blood of Christ that covers over us and washes those sins away. So when this holy, perfect God looks down, he sees what Christ has done and not us. Amen. And Jesus took that cup after the meal and he said, let's drink this together, remembering that covenant together. And as the Spirit is speaking to you right now, I want you to listen to the Spirit to that one person that you feel bitter about right now or resentful or maybe not treating them so well or somebody who did something to you long ago or somebody who mistreated you or said something bad about you. Or maybe there's somebody that you just hope something bad will happen. Maybe you don't even know them but you're hoping something bad will happen to them. Or maybe you feel sorry for yourself this morning. Let the Spirit wash over you and heal you. And if you want to talk to me, you can always call me. You have my number. But make sure that if you're struggling with forgiveness, you talk to God and say, God, I can't deal with this on my own. I need your strength to forgive this person and then move towards God and not away from Him. And you will find a new lease on life where you are feeling freer and fuller of joy. If your day is filled more with anger than joy, you got work to do. And let God's joy give you a new adventure. Amen. Vic, come and lead us. As we close. Let's stand as we sing, I'm so glad I'm a part of the family of God.
part of this family. Amen? We are all so different, but because of Christ's forgiveness and the forgiveness we extend each other, we can love each other. It's an amazing thing. And now, Lord, teach us to let the peace that comes from Christ rule in our hearts. When I have forgiven words, allow your forgiveness to fill my heart with peace. I pray this peace that not only com that comes only through Jesus will rule in my heart, keeping out doubt and questions. And above all, I'm thankful. Not just today, not just this week, but always. Thank you for the reminder to always be thankful. With gratitude, I can draw closer to you and let go of unforgiveness. With gratitude, I can see the person who caused my pain as a child of the Most High God, loved and accepted. Help me find the compassion that comes with true forgiveness. And when I see the person who hurt me, bring this prayer back to my remembrance so I can take any ungodly thoughts captive and make them obedient to Christ. And may the confidence of Christ in my heart guide me into the freedom of forgiveness. I praise you for the work you are doing in my life, teaching and perfecting my life, my faith. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you for joining us today. You may be seated.